We continue to honor Black History Month by talking about a man some of you may have heard of, Ken Knight. Not the street on the northwest side of Jacksonville, but the legendary African-American broadcaster that street was named after. Yes, Ken Knight was the first African-American to ever host a TV show in Jacksonville, and that weekly show aired here, WJXT, in the 1960s. But there's so much more to his legacy. News for Jacks reporter Eric Avenier giving us a look at how Knight plays an important part in local history. Ken Knight not only became a household name in both radio and television, he also helped pave the way for many African Americans to get into broadcasting. Mention the name Ken Knight. Many people think of the street Ken Knight Drive, a thoroughfare in a predominantly black neighborhood on Jacksonville's northwest side, unfortunately known for gun violence and poverty. Ken Knight Drive is named after Adrian Kenneth Knight, a legendary broadcaster who broke barriers in radio and television. Just my uncle. To me. His niece, Martha Washington George, is a radio historian who says her uncle got his start at a Daytona Beach country radio station in 1947. He had a significant following that got the attention of people in Atlanta. They asked him to come up to Atlanta and be the program director to open up the first black-owned radio station in the United States. While working at the Atlanta station, Knight became a bigger radio personality with more listeners, but he eventually moved to Jacksonville to marry his fiancée, who was working in the River City as a teacher. He decided to come to Jacksonville while the opportunity was there to work at radio station there. As a matter of fact, he ended up working at two at one time. Then in 1961, Knight made the transition to television while still working in radio. He once again made history by becoming the first black person to host a weekly gospel show on WJXT Channel 4. Ritz Museum historian Adonica Toller says Knight used WJXT's airwaves to showcase African-American performers. And it was a regular show uh, that broadcast um, sometimes three nights a week. But radio was his passion. During the fifth anniversary of the first black radio station in Atlanta where he once worked, Knight took to the airwaves in Jacksonville and honored the people he worked with. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. May I come in? This is Ken Knight. You know, formerly I was program director for WERD, and it's a pleasure to say hello to you on this, your fifth anniversary celebration. He even mentioned Jacksonville in that same broadcast. I'm no longer with the station, but connected with the station in Jacksonville. Knight is credited for starting a movement in broadcasting in which more African Americans would ask for their music and announcements to be on the airwaves. He also is credited for starting training programs that prepared blacks for careers in broadcasting. He and his peers had a great impact on the industry because it gave people the opportunity to come into broadcasting who would not otherwise have gotten that opportunity. If you're in broadcasting or you're an entertainer of sorts, Ken Knight played a big part in opening the door for you. Ken Knight died in Jacksonville on September 12, 1973. He was only 64 when he passed away. He will be known as one of the most accomplished African-American broadcasters in history who helped create the National Association of Television and Radio Announcers. Three years ago, Ken Knight was inducted into the Georgia Radio Hall of Fame. A little more than a week from now, he will be inducted into the National Black Radio Hall of Fame. But for right now, we honor the man who opened so many doors to so many broadcasters like myself currently working for the local station.